I know that a lot of Bears fans right now are feeling all types of internally conflicted. On the one hand, they've got this strange feeling. This is, this is what fun feels like, watching offensive football. But then the deepest cackles of their soul are screaming out, Bears football! Bears football! And rebelling against that fun that they see! Rebelling and rebelling! And you're hoping and you're hoping that you can get rid of it! To flush that Bears football feeling out! But it is very, very deeply rooted and will take a long, long time. So you're going to have to overcome some of that feeling of, oh my God, the defense gives up 28 points, but that's okay. The offense scores 32 points. That's okay. That's modern football. That's how games are won in the NFL today. The antithesis of Bears football. So I know like a lot of you are just Besides yourself, like you don't know, you, you, you feel almost like this state of consistent euphoric orgasm because you don't know what this feeling is like, right? Right? This is the type of game you wanted to see out of the Bears this year, where the wins and losses don't matter. Wins are a nice bonus if you get them, but it ain't the name of the game. It is all about Justin Fields. Do not miss the plot here. That's all this season is about. And if you're looking at the past couple of weeks and you're looking at today's performance by Justin Fields, you're saying to yourself, man, I feel a lot better about the future. As a Chicago fan, I'm more excited about the future of the Bears than I am the Bulls. And I understand that feeling. I'm getting closer to that point as well. Not that I'm excited about the Bulls. They ain't fucking going anywhere. They're not doing anything. Epitome of a dumb leadership team, meaning front office, building a mid-ass team and expecting that to be better than a mid-ass team. When you watch the Bears today, though, like, the, this is how games are supposed to be played in 2022, for the most part. And if you really want to get down to brass tacks today, I know we can sit there and bitch about the referees. You're going to hear Bears fans do what they do best, whine, piss, and moan about things that shouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Oh my god, that pass interference on Jackson was god awfully brutally bad. How could they miss that call of pass interference on Chase Claypool late? And look, I'll grant you, especially on that Chase Claypool call, that was fucking pass interference. That has to be called. Has to be. But if you are more preoccupied with that as being the reason why the Bears won this game and it doesn't even fucking matter whether they won or lost, then I don't know what to tell you. That's not why they lost the game. If anything, you could point to the last couple of series and you got gutless Getsy. Put him up. I'm the offensive coordinator. I got courage. But I can't help myself. I even scare myself. First and ten halfback dive. Second and ten halfback dive. Bunch of passes behind the line of scrimmage. Put them up. Anybody can throw down the field. I got courage. Now you can point to shit like that and say those are bigger contributing factors as to why the Bears did not win today. You could also look at the fact of the Bears giving up a touchdown on a block punt on special teams. That's the difference in the damn game right there. The Bears scored more points offensively today than the frickin' Dolphins did. It's one of these rare occasions, I know as a Bears fan, where you say the offense pretty much did what they needed to do for the most part to win this game. Not entirely, because ultimately at the end of the day, they had chances to win this game in the fourth quarter and didn't get it done. And that's a little bit disappointing for sure. Because that was an interesting thought too, is to be able to have Fields in a spot with the ball in his hands in the fourth quarter and be able to take his team down the field and win this damn game. And he had a couple opportunities to do that, and he ultimately failed to do so. And I know a lot of fans are going to sit there and celebrate, you know, Justin Fields ran for 178 yards and a touchdown. That's a regular season quarterback rushing record. And that's all fine and good and all. That's exciting. It's exciting to watch him play. But at some point in time, you have to be able to throw for over 123 damn yards. Now, of course, it doesn't help when you got equanimous St. Bullshit dropping the ball on fourth down with the game on the goddamn line. 
and other instances like that. Those types of things don't help. I'll grant you. But there is still this philosophy and approach that says you need to throw the ball down the field more than what they actually do. And you got to be able to pass the ball, throw the ball more effectively than you do here. Because this 178 rushing yards as a quarterback is great, but it is not sustainable in the long term and it is ultimately not championship football. And don't ever get it twisted. At the end of the day, even when it comes to Justin Fields, no matter how exciting you're fighting him, no matter how dynamic you're fighting him, it's not just about him running around like crazy. He has to show that he can be a big-time passer in this league. The name of the game is to win the Super Bowl. The way you do that is with a quarterback that can make big-time throws in big-time spots. Like I look at the Miami Dolphins, and they have done a wonderful job of surrounding Tua Tagovailoa with pieces and weapons on offense. Doing their best to eliminate the excuses. Doing their best to put the help around him. But when you watch a Tua Tagovailoa, He's got a Tyreek Hill to throw to. You know, and the Bears defense decides, hey, we're in the red zone. Let's just not try defending Tyreek Hill at all. We'll just throw him off by surprise. It didn't work out, did it? Got all this speed with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. And at some point in time, even when you're watching today's game, you saw multiple examples where if Tua had better arm strength, this Miami Dolphins offense would be at a whole different level. They would be one of the three or four best offenses in the damn league. They would be scary. They're a really good offense, and Tua is really good at attacking the middle of the field and finding the soft spot in the defense, but don't get it twisted. There are numerous times where receivers have to dive to the ground to catch the ball because Tua has missed the mark, because he doesn't have the arm. Every big throw that he has to make, every deep throw, every long throw, every tough spot throw he has to make requires a lot of step up, a lot of setup. And you saw that on the pass interference early in the game. If he gets the receiver in stride, it's a touchdown. Later on in the game, the third down, where you get a first down, basically the game's over. He underthrows his receiver by several yards and the receiver's got to slow down. Like, Fields has more natural arm talent than Tua. Tua, in terms of mental aspects of being a pocket passer right now, is vastly superior, but also hard to gauge because he's got vastly superior supporting cast around him. What was encouraging to me today with the Bears offense, though, was that there were clearly periods of time where they were trying to force the ball into Darnell Mooney's hands and Cole Komet's hands and Chase Claypool's hands. You know, get the ball in the hands of your weapons. I like that. Some of you really like David Montgomery being the lead running back on this team. I fucking don't. David Montgomery is the type of running back is, you need two yards, he'll get you three to four yards. You need three to four yards, he'll get you three to four yards. You need six yards, look at how hard he had to work to get to the three to four yards. When Khalil Herbert is in there as a ball carrier, the offense is different. I understand you might say, well, he's horrible in pass protection. He's the one that freaking gave up. The block punt that led to a touchdown on special teams, to which I would say, well, why is Khalil Herbert in that fucking spot anyways? That's bad coaching. But for this Bears offense, you look at them, and you know the offensive line still had some issues today, but they held up enough at enough periods of time where it gave enough time for Justin Fields to be able to make big plays happen with his feet. Like, this was dynamic stuff. This was fun stuff to watch. It would have been really nice to see them be able to win this game with Justin Fields taking them down the field late and leading them to a touchdown drive. Now, that would have been the perfect cap on everything. But I do want to caution everybody on one thing here. Is while the Bears scored a lot of points today, and it serves as further validation, technically, technically, the defense only gave up 28 points today, which is a significant improvement from the 42 they gave up the week before against Dallas. They got rid of Roquan Smith and they gave up 14 fewer points to an offense that is really damn good itself. Further justifying why Roquan Smith was irrelevant for the Chicago Bears in the future and it was better he had more value if you traded him. Argue against the wall. If you don't agree, you're wrong. But my concern is, is that Ryan Poles looks at this and says, well, you know, this offense really started to come into its own and Darnell Mooney and Chase Claypool and Cole Komet. That's enough in the passing game. Ah, ah, bullshit. Gonna look at that offensive line and say, yeah, we don't need massive investment there. Bullshit. Your offensive line is mid as hell. Your wide receiving group is still mid as hell. 
the number one priority for this team is offense. The number one priority in the offseason for Ryan Poles is not to fucking address the defense. He's going to sit there and panic because, oh, the, the, the defense gave up 28 points today. Well, you're going to in the modern NFL sometimes. That's okay. But when you needed some big stops in today's game in the fourth quarter, the Bears defense was able to get it. That's how you do modern defensive football. It comes down to offense, 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 mother humper. Your number one priority this offseason is still offense. Multiple starters on that offensive line. At least one more upgrade at wide receiver, maybe two. Another tight end with some damn speed that Cole Komet sure as hell ain't got. That's the priority. Defense is secondary. And I am a little worried that Ryan Poles is going to miss the plot here. Because, yes, it was nice to see him trade away a Roquan Smith. And if you're going to make a move for somebody, you make it for Trace Claypool. Because at least you're saying you're trying to put some help around Justin Fields. You realize you need more help around him to be able to fully and effectively evaluate him. But don't get it twisted. It's still about Justin Fields, first and foremost, and will continue to be in the future. So it's a double-edged sword here. Justin Fields, yes, 178 rushing yards. NFL single-game record rushing by a quarterback. But at some point in time, you need to be able to throw as an offense. Now, I'm not just blaming Justin Fields. Listen to me here. I'm talking about as an offense as a whole. You have to be able to throw for more than 123 damn yards. Because even this, whether it comes from a running back or a quarterback... The fact that you have somebody running for 178 yards in 2022 feels like, you guessed it, folks, Bears football! So it's a double-edged sword because, yes, Justin Field looks great and he makes some big plays, but sometimes some of the basic and fundamental ones, some of the play calling was much better today, but then at other times you're scratching your head and you say, why the fuck are you doing that? You just move the ball down the field on the first drive offensively, throwing the damn ball, so you come back and it's half-back dive, half-back dive, and it's boring shit. Stop doing that. Throw the fucking pill. It will also open up that running game when you do decide to deploy it. Makes you more unpredictable. Stretches the defense out horizontally and then vertically. Gee, that's almost like it's the name of the game in the modern NFL. But it's also a double-edged sword because if Ryan Poles continues to see a Bears offense put up 24, 7, 27, 30, 33, 34 points in, a give, in enough given weeks, he's going to start losing the plot and thinking that his offense is better off than it actually is. So it's risky here. I want to see this Bears offense get better at passing the football. They need to do that. And I don't want to see this team in the offense overly emphasize and prioritize defense because that is a recipe for disaster that you better know as Bears football. So maybe you're mad a little Ugh, because the Bears didn't win today. You're missing the plot. Who cares? Honestly, who cares? I don't even talk about tanking for draft position. You'll notice you haven't really even heard me talk about that. It is all about the offense. It is all about Justin Fields. And this is better. This is a much more pleasurable, enjoyable viewing experience, is it not? The only game that I really care about that the Bears have to win in the manner in which they win the rest of this year is in a few weeks, the game before their bye week against Green Bay. I think it's Sunday, December 4th. That's a game they have to win. That's a game that Justin Fields has to outplay Aaron Rodgers. You need to send Aaron Rodgers washed up ass into retirement, leaving no doubt that he might have been daddy for a long damn time. But that era is over. That's the game you worry about whether they win or lose. Fuck the rest of them.